Hey, what's up, users? This is Giant Muse for you here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to go over the new moving slideshow widget uh, found at museforyoushop.com. Um, so I'll go ahead and go into the preview section. So I'll go into the preview full width, and here we can see we have a moving slideshow. So the images move within the slideshow, and this is a full width uh, slideshow here looks good so you can have nice images and and just have them move within the slideshow all right and then we have multiple so you can have multiple slideshows on one page um, you can add a caption and previous and next buttons and dot navigation uh, you can remove the navigation items as well so you can have like this really cool like uh, slideshow that pans the elements or moves the elements like that and this effect is what uh, a lot are calling the Ken Burns effect where you have this panning effect where the images move. Um, and it, for this one, it almost looks like the image is within the browser and the browser, uh, yeah, the browser is like moving or panning um, to the image, like a almost like a video camera, which is kind of cool. Um, and then here we have the caption and dot navigation without the previous and next buttons. Okay, so uh, in this video tutorial, I'm gonna go over how to use this widget and where to access it. Uh, so to access this widget, you simply go to meetsforyoushop.com um, and then here you can click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. Uh, the only widget that is not included in the subscription is the Muse Morph SVG Morphing widget uh, because it is powered by Greensock's Morph SVG plugin technology. So it is a standalone widget. And right down here we have the moving slideshow, so there's 11 movement effects. Um, and here you can click uh, add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. And right here I have more, uh, more of a description of the widget and the features that are included. Uh, so here we have the different movement effects. We have crossfade, you can crossfade, zoom out, zoom in, pan up, pan down, pan left, pan right, diagonal top left to bottom right, diagonal top right to bottom left diagonal bottom right to top left or diagonal bottom left to top right and here are the features that are included within the widget um, you can add multiple slideshows on one page you can choose from 11 different movement effects or have them all play in the slideshow so you can have all the effects play uh, within the slideshow you can add up to 12 images per, per slideshow uh, you can set the slideshow to 100 percent width you can set the width and height of the slideshow you can set the speed of the slideshow you can set the easing of the slideshow all colors are customizable in the slideshow. You can add previous and next buttons. You can add dot navigation. You can enable or disable navigation buttons. You can add captions to the images. You can add alternative text to the images. You can link images to internal links, external links, and anchor points. You can op open links in same page or new page. You can add different slideshows on different breakpoints. It works in adaptive design and fluid width design, and it's lightweight for your website. Um, so here, yeah, you can add up to 12 images uh, per slideshow. Yep, yeah, and I went over that up there. Um, so here to the left, we have the widget options as well, or a few images of the widget options. Um, here are the preview pages that I went over as well. And there's a community section here as well if you'd like to ask any questions uh, about the widget. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started with the widget or how to use it. So I'll go into Adobe Muse and I'll go to the library panel. And if you don't see the library panel, you can go to window and click on library. And here I'll type in moving. Um, and here is the moving slideshow widget. All right, so here's the widget and the widget options. Now, before I add any images, I want to resize my images uh, to make sure that they fit nicely within the slideshow. If I have an image that has more width than height or the height isn't enough, then the image doesn't have enough room to, to, uh, to kind of do the effect or to to pan or zoom in. So the image needs to have enough height to do all the movement effects. Um, so to resize the images, um, I'm gonna go to a website called berm.net. And here for the resize, resize and crop dimensions, I'm gonna say 2048 by 2048. So I want the image to be a perfect square. So there's enough uh, height and width. So the image, the image has enough room to play in, even if it's 100% width and you make the browser really large, the image will still have enough height uh, to move. And also if it's you know a smaller gallery or just not full width, uh, the image will also have enough height 
to move as well. Um, so I'm going to go into my images and I have 11 images here um, that I'll work with. And if I look at the images, we can see that the size is really large as well. So we have like 10.7 megabytes, 11.1. .1. That's really large for an image. I'd say the max you'd want for an image is like 500 kilobytes. Um, 200 kilobytes is ideal, I would say, for images so it doesn't affect your load time for your website. Um, and the reason I chose 2048 is because, and I think I might have mentioned this, is because Adobe Muse automatically resizes your images to 2048 pixels in width if it's larger than 2048 pixels in width. Um, so this is just a nice way to crop the images before placing them into Adobe Muse. And we can see that some of these images, these are unsplash images. You know, some of these images are 6,000 by 4,000, which is huge. Um, so this is gonna resize all the images to 2048 by 2048. Um, and if you have any questions about that, let me know. You can write it in the comments section or in the community section on the widget page. So here I'll click, hold, and drag. And it's going to crop and make the images 2048 by 2048, just like that. So here we can see that it's cropped all the images and resized. So here I'll just click on Save Zip, and it'll, it'll save, save the zip file to my computer. And I'll just go, go grab that zip file. Okay, so here I have the zip file, so I'll double click, and here are all my cropped images. And as we can see, the file size is a lot smaller, um, except this one here, uh, number 10, it's 1.2 megabytes, so I might not use that or run it through a compressor again. All right, so there I have my images, so I'll go back into the slideshow, and I'll just add four images. Um, and actually, before I do that, we can see here, for select number of images, we can do 2 to 12. Um, the slideshow needs at least two images in order for the, uh, the moving effect to, to take place. Um, so I'm just going to add some images. Um, I'll add four because I have four images selected. And three and four. Okay, so there I have my images. And let's see how this looks like in the browser. So I'll go to File, Preview Page, and Browser. And we can see that it is, it is moving. And I'm using all the effects because I don't have just one effect selected. So it looks good. There we have a nice moving uh, slideshow. And if I wanted to add multiple, I'll just copy and paste this one and put it right here. Yep, right there. And I'll just change the instance number here. And then I could add, you know, other images as well uh, in the slideshow. So we'll do something like this and preview and there we have two different moving slideshows um, so now i'll go over the widget options a bit um, so the select number of images i went over um, you can change the slideshow height here you can reposition from the top so if you want the the image to move down you know you can do like 50. so this will allow you to to move the image up or down um, if if the image looks good in the slideshow you you might not need to work with this this again is only if you didn't add enough height and you might want to move the image down. Uh, but this option just allows you to reposition the image from the top uh, in case it's needed. Um, and you can change the border radius. So if I sit, set this to zero, then the gallery won't have a border radius. Um, and here are the options. This is the effect modifier. Um, you can choose from one to two. Two is the max movement. So the higher the number, the more movement to the image. Um, in the order, you can play the, the slideshow in, in sequence, or you can have it in a random order. You can set how long you want the effect to last. Um, you can set the transition dura duration, how long it'll take for the next slide uh, to, to transition, or how long it'll take to transition to the next slide. Uh, so this is in milliseconds, so it's half a second. You can autoplay the slideshow, which I would recommend. That way the images start moving immediately. And you can play all effects at random, or just play one effect at a time. So if I uncheck this, um, I can do like pan up, and I'll go and preview this. And the image will just pan up for this gallery here. So that looks good there. Yeah. And I can, you know, click next. And if you click next, it'll take, um, once it kicks into the next slide, that's when it'll start moving again. So if the user manually goes through, through the slide, uh, once it kicks into the autoplay again into the next slide, that's when it'll uh, start with the effects again. Yeah, and you can do no dot navigation just like that. All right, and we go to options again. Um, you can select the easing, so you can do linear, ease, ease in, ease out, or ease in, out. Um, and here you can change the text for the previous and next buttons. 
And here you can enable or disable, you know, the captions, the previous next, next buttons or the dot navigation. So if I uncheck all of this and I preview in the browser, there's no uh, dot navigation or anything like that. For this one, it's enabled. That's why we see it here. But for this one, we've taken off the caption, the dot navigation, and the, uh, the regular navigation buttons. Okay. So those are the options there. And uh, I'll go back in here and then match image size. So let's say your images are 800 pixels in width and you set your slideshow to larger than 800 pixels in width. If you click match image size, the slideshow will not get larger than the image. Um, so this is you know optional if you don't want your image, your slideshow to get larger than the maximum width of the images in your slideshow. So here, if you didn't have any links in the image section, um, you could click on disable link cursor and there wouldn't be the link cursor over the image. Um, and if you have multiple slideshows, the last uh, slideshow is what's going to um, set the precedence for that. So I'd have to go into the last slideshow here and then preview in the browser. And then I don't have a link cursor. So if you have multiple galleries on your page, the last gallery on your page is, is what's going, going to control all the styling. Um, so for this one, if I were to change uh, you know the color for the captions the navigation buttons or the dot navigation for instance if i set this to orange um, and i brought back the dot navigation here for this one it will be orange as well so this last one will control the styling for the uh, the widgets so if you set all the styling for the first one and just copy and paste and change the instance number then all the slideshows will have the styling the same styling Okay, so the, there I went over the options here. Um, in the captions, you can style the captions here. So I'll just delete this gallery for now so I can play with the styling in here. Um, so here I'll bring back the captions um, so we can look at the captions. So I'll select captions, enable them. And here I've changed the caption background to green. The text color I've set to white and yep, I've set the text size to 32. Um, the line height, I'll say three and the top, the caption top padding, I'll say zero. Uh, when you make the text larger, it does affect the positioning. So as we can see, we have this larger text and this larger caption. Um, if I were to leave the caption to let's say 15 for the top padding, then it would be lower here. So we, you know, I took the padding from the top off, so the text fits nicely within the larger caption there. All right, so that allows you to play with the captions and the size. So I'll disable. I'll say back to zero here. Um, for now, I'll just disable the captions here. Um, and then for the navigation buttons, you can change the background color, the text color, and the background hover color, and the text hover color as well. For the dot navigation, you can change the size of the dot navigation. So I can say like 32 by 32, and makes it larger, and then I can change the, the, uh, the radius, the border radius, so I'll say something larger, like 50, um, and I can change all the colors. So there we have a larger um, dot navigation. And I can change the border color, the hover color. So that might be a little bit too large for this, uh, for the dot navigation. So I'll say something like 24 by 24. And you can, you know, change the width and the height and really have a really customized uh, dot navigation. All right, and the last thing I'll go over here is the images. You can have alternative text, and this will also work as the caption. And alternative text lets the search engines know what the image is about. So uh, whatever you write in here, it's great for, for the search engines to know what the image is about. And also on screen readers, if the screen reader uh, does not show the image, it lets the user know what the image is about. And here you can link the image to an internal link, external link, or uh, an anchor point. Uh, for internal, it's dot backslash the page name dot HTML. And the home page is always dot backslash index dot HTML. For external URLs or external links, um, you just do the domain, so HTTP, colon backslash backslash in the name of the domain and the anchor point is hashtag and the the anchor name so hashtag yeah and then the anchor name and then you can open the link in a new page or have it open in the same page um, and you can add up to 12 images here by selecting uh, 2 to 12 images here and you can reference this here on how to use the widget so here it says each new slideshow on the same page must have a unique instance number uh, to change the font for the caption previous button and next button simply click on the widget and go to the built-in Adobe Muse op text option. So I can click on the widget and I can select uh, any text here. 
And then if I bring back the captions right in here, or in the options, I'll bring back the caption. And we can see it has that text. So let me preview this in the browser. And there it has that text that we selected from the font option. All right, so the styling isn't that great, but I'm just kind of going over it for uh, for this tutorial. And then to make the slideshow 100% width, click on the widget and then go to resize in the upper toolbar and select stretch to browser width. Um, so here I'll click on the widget, I'll go to resize and I'll say stretch to browser width. And I'll take off the, um, the captions in here and the dot navigation. So now we have a full width uh, slideshow and I'll bring this to the top and I'll go to file preview page and browser. So we have a full width uh, moving slideshow widget. Looks good. All right, we have the flower there and I'll make it random. So I'll go into the options and play all effects at random. There we go. So we have a moving full width slideshow. And if we resize the browser, it works really well. And we could even add breakpoints. So I can say 768, uh, 480. And I'll go to File, Preview Page, and Browser. And it works really well with the breakpoints as well. All right, looks good. So I think I've covered everything with the widget. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. Um, yeah, and you can change the height here. So if I say to 400, um, it'll change the height of the widget and then we have a taller uh, slideshow there moving slideshow looks good all right so I think I've covered everything with the widget uh, most of it was kind of going over styling uh, you do want to crop your images just to make sure that they're all the same size so when you know you don't have one image that's smaller in height and then doesn't look good when it's going through the slideshow um, and you can use berm.net to crop and resize the images um, so I think, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video tutorial. Again, to access this widget, uh, you simply go to museforyoushop.com, and then here you can click on the pop-up, and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. Uh, the only widget that's not included in the subscription is the Muse Morph SVG Morphing widget uh, because it is powered by GreenSocks Morph SVG plugin technology, uh, so it is a standalone widget there. Uh, and here we have the Moving Slideshow widget. Here you can click Add to Cart to purchase individually, or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Um, and here we have more, more of a description of the widget and the features included. Uh, here to the left is the a few images of the widget options. Uh, here is berm.net if you want to crop and resize images or if you have an, your own program or another program to use to crop and resize, that, that's great too. Um, and here we have the preview pages, full width and multiple. And here we have a community section. If you have any questions about the widget, you can ask it here as well or in the comments section below. So that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. Uh, if you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.